and on how the muscles worked, and they twisted as they squeezed. It was <laughs> yeah. It's what we know that the fibers of Purkinje, where the heart gets the voltage of fire, are profoundly fractal. Dr. Ari Goldberg's work. But now we know in the power spectrum of the EKG, the onset of fractality is the vitality defined of the immune system. It's the centripetal force rest- restored, which is why the heart basically, you know, has the voltage available to beat when you're under a tree. But mm-hmm. if you're in a metal building, you're going to die eventually because you don't have the fractality to charge your heart. So um, right. it, the, the paper on what you're referring to was called The Heart is Not a Pump by Marinelli in Detroit, and basically in the anthroposophic tradition, he showed that the seven layers of the heart muscle, which we know from uh, Lawrence Edwards' work, uh, Vortex of Life, are in the seven spin, tilt, symmetry, axial angles of the tetrahedron, according to the dissections of Pettigrew. And so the seven spins of the tetra are defining the not just the seven layers of the heart muscle, but the heart of the sun and the anal and a bunch of other stuff, the origin of the Hebrew. So... The reason the heart muscle layers fire in that sequence, depending on the angle of the approaching voltage field, is that the heart can throw a donut in any angle of tilt, and those vortex tornadoes are sustained sonically throughout the bloodstream. And it's called the heart is not a pump. It throws the blood in an angular vortex. It's tossing out a sequence of donuts in a sequence of angles, which is the origin of Hebrew, actually. But it's another story. I found that very interesting, the, the, the fact that the heart was twisting and throwing the blood out as a vortex, that was, that was brilliant. Yeah. If, you, if you kind of throw your hand around as you grab a knot and you see your, your hand is creating a little tornado, the angle of incidence of those vortex tornadoes, which is the physics of the origin of Hebrew, is indexed by the seven spin tilt symmetries of tetra. Because if you, if you know how to assemble donuts in the symmetry of tetra, you can build DNA, basically. So the origin of that physics of the alphabet and the origin of heart muscle and the origin of... The sonics of the heart that create the immune system is all the same physics, seven spy, five spin symmetry. It's called the anu physics. You mentioned something there just um, um, while saying that. That is another lead in, and that's uh, architecture. And you feel that the the way architecture is is the uh, way buildings are built, the way we the things we live in, the architecture that we live in. That that's important. That there's that there's something that can be done there. Um, yes, we, differently. We, yeah, we're essentially recommending that no architect be paid until it's proven that the building design causes a seed to germinate electrically. And once you know how to do that, then you could be an architect. Until then, you're a failure. So every biology department on planet Earth basically should be fired because they don't know what life is because they're located in a metal building. Right. <laughs> that that's square. So that's proof that those biologists don't know what life is, so they don't deserve to have a job. <laughs> yeah. No. But anyway, we invented the curriculum called Biologic Architecture. We have international conferences in many countries. The whole curriculum is at goldenmean.info slash architecture, and we have people in, in countries all over the world practicing this now. And it's really very simple. Once you know what causes life, which is the electric field that causes life, it's called fractal, based on pine cone physics, <laughs> then you know how to build a building. You can, you can build a building that makes the correct electric field to cause biology to thrive. It's very simple. And here is how you measure it. You take a simple little spectrum analyzer and you measure for harmonic inclusiveness in the center. That will predict charge compression. It's identical to what Karatkov measures as fractality in air with a GDV. We agree completely, Karatkov and I. And when you measure that, you predict whether or not that electric field will cause a seed to germinate and cause life to happen. And once you know that, then you can be an architect. Until then, you're fired. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Excuse me, but I'm getting a little Scorpio in my old age. But hey, that no. curriculum is very advanced. There's architects all over the world working on that physics. And it means that steel and aluminum are poison because they make a capacitor that's harmonically exclusive instead of harmonically inclusive. And that's why they kill germinating seeds. So do not send your children to a school made of metal because uh-huh. they lose their soul there. Right. It's, it's simple. It's because now, if we, now, if we were going to make a building... <laughs> that was conducive to life and learning and exactly. living. Yes. What would we build? Well, it's, you know, the Steiner people did have that part right. The children would only touch basically living stone, living fabric, and living material like wood. And the reason is that those structures are what's called phase conjugate in their dielectric, which means they're harmonic inclusive, that every molecule that was once part of life has been shoved into a fractal and therefore supports the charge distribution called life and mind. It's very simple. Here's the experiment. 
you grab a piece of aluminum, hold it in your hand, and you notice that your aura dies and you die. And it's because the electric field of that aluminum is harmonically exclusive and pre prevents charge distribution efficiency and therefore mind. Prevents your aura from growing. Mm -hmm. Prevents charge from compression is the opposite of fractal and phase conjugate. Now, if you take in your hand a piece of great hardwood or living fabric or anything like that, you can feel into it, and your aura can propagate through it, and mind can inhabit. That means that if there's a metal roof on your house, it's not only preventing you from dreaming well, but it prevents you from birthing and dying well. Okay. What about, uh, are you there? <laughs> I carry on, but, you know, my enthusiasm. No, is... <laughs> no, it's good that you have the enthusiasm. Is yeah. there a, is a, now that we know the materials, is there a particular shape, a geometry well, that we can build those buildings that's better yeah. and more... If, if you look at the electric field measurement of what the aboriginals called the dreaming track or the song line, you see a river of magnetic conductivity, which is where you need to go when you dream or die. It's the only place you can go when you dream or die. Otherwise, you're toast. So step one is make a magnetic map of your bed and then your house and then your garden and then your town and then your planet. And they all need to look like a rose, which, right. is, the, which is the magnetic map of Prague, Bohemia. And the reason that magnetic that, yeah. map enables lucid dreaming in Prague is because it's a rose, which is called fractal. And that enables charge distribution. And that's how you propagate life. <laughs> so there's a the geometry for you. It's a rose. It's a rose. So if we can build a building in the shape of a rose. But, and, and, so, and when you teach that to electrical engineers, it means you start by making a magnetic map of your site, and then you find that centripetal charge, the charge compression places, which predict seed germination. Like Stonehenge, you get about, I don't know, 30 to 50% improvement in germination. We now know why. The Stonehenge was a capacitor to prevent aging, which is what's called the Garden of Eden. And this was a technology for life extension based on electric field theory. So we do have the capacity for learning more about life extension, and you, you guys are working on proving that. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, we're going to have to go for a quick break now, so we'll catch you on the other side. Cool. And we're back with Dan Winter, who has a website called goldenmean.info. That's www.goldenmean.info. And you can go there and see a lot of videos and all kinds of amazing information. Uh, welcome back, Dan. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else you want to cover right now? I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, sacred geometry, if we could. I know well, that you know, you're sort of instrumental in that. Yeah, it's kind of where I sort of got a reputation. But the concept of sacred geometry just means sustainable wave symmetry. And it's merely introduction to quantum mechanics. I mean, the fact that we now have proof that the golden ratio is the structure of hydrogen and the definition of call, what's called the grail in the blood, it, it means the only way wave interference becomes sustainable. So the concept of the sacred there only refers to sustainable wave interference, which is a problem solved by golden ratio. Right. Uh, okay. So that's the uh, sacred geometry. And you've done a bunch of videos on that, and they're available on your website. Hundreds. <laughs> Hundreds. You've done all kinds of stuff. Been uh, at this for 30 years. I'm yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, you're not. You, you're going you're gonna to be immortal. You're going you're gonna to figure this all stuff out in no time at all, and that's it. Well, you're going you're to be number what, one of the number, the first guy who's immortal. So, there you go. <laughs> Well, actually, what it's about is growing your aura. Honestly, that is the definition of success. For example, if you think a thought which is shareable, you can measure the increase in your aura size because the plasma recognizes where sustainability lies, defining pure intention, coherence perfected by fractality. So when you measure your aura, you're predicting whether you're going to take something with you when you dream and when you die. If you can't lucid dream, you won't take anything with you when you die. And the symmetry, what you see when you die, called the Clouvet form constants, which is a sequence of symmetry operations of DNA, which is the map to successful dying, is basically your DNA saying, get ready to compress, implode, and distribute charge, which is another way of saying, get fractal or get dead. And that's how you join the communion of saints, or the collective unconscious, which is basically the charge distribution supported by fractality in the environment. Now, do you think that that connects to the collective? That one individual uh, making a change would affect 
maybe the people around them or humanity as a whole or yes that's exactly right the, the profound physics of the collective unconscious is precisely what the phase conjugate dialectric is read the paper Alice and Barium Titanate Land about phase conjugate dialectrics they're self-organizing they know what's happening to each other at a distance and it's really simply because when the field becomes centripetal, the communication at the center of that fractal, like at the tip of the pine cone, is superluminable by powers of golden ratio times the speed of light, and that's the definition of all profound multiple connectedness and time travel and a bunch of other good stuff. And that syrupy, centripetal collective field is absolutely collectively aware when any part of it learns to better support survival. So when you think thoughts, which are what's called shareable, which is coherence perfected by fractality, power spectra golden ratio, that basically causes you to become an attractor for charge, living plasma. Right. And that is the mechanism of what's called grace in church. And if, and if you have that attraction, um, you can affect other people around you or the, the whole. That's right. You become the, part of the, a drop in the well, right? Right. The bliss... Is has critical mass and it's contagious for that reason. Okay. And it's measured by power spectral golden ratio. It starts in brainwaves and EKG. And you you found this in your research as well? Been measuring that for fifteen years, ten long years. Long time, <laughs> long time. Okay, now you mentioned you mentioned time travel. And I did. Uh, that's one of my particular I love that area. It's one of uh -huh. my I'm fascinated with time travel and the concept of it. Do you have um do you have anything you can tell us more in depth about time travel and how one I provided the that? equation that's new proof that the only self-organization in time is fractal, goldenmean.info slash coincidence. So the physics of coincidence and time synchronicity begins with understanding fractality in time. To understand that, you need to know that time only names the period of charge rotation. So the rotation of charge is both the only definition of mass and time. Once you begin to understand that, and then you see that Planck, time, time constant, times golden ratio, not only predicts hydrogen frequency, but the Earth year and the Venus year directly. And I wrote the new equations to prove that. So I, only, I wrote the only real proof that time is fractal. And that's the only way the waves of charge rotating, called time, self-organized, become centripetal. So when you, when you embed well in that system of fractal charge distribution, then... Mm -hmm. You become part of that distribution, you can travel in time. Example, the only reason why, you know, Jodie Foster in the film Contact could time travel was because the capacitor antenna was dodecahedral, which is stellation golden ratio. Right. Or um, the decadogram. She, she only experienced, uh, well, she experienced a, a long time dilation, and the people that were producing the experiment only experienced her dropping into the water. There was a discrepancy there in time. Well, it's, it's not unlike lucid dreaming, but the physics of lucid dreaming begin with understanding why the magnetic map of your bed must be fractal and your aura must be fractal and phase coherent. Just like the electric environment capacitance around Philadelphia and Montauk were phase conjugate. That even, you could even tell in advance who could time travel by the spectrum analysis of DNA. We're going to learn that measurement of soul and ability to time travel starts with understanding how to spectrum analyze DNA because you can see phase coherence and phase conjugation in the braid and that is a clue that the charge propagation is becoming perfected coherence, what's called fractal or phase conjugate. And that indicates time travel up capability. It's, it's called boson 7 at Montauk. It's called microchloridians in blood in the Star Wars movies. Oh, yeah, microchloridians, yeah. So we, do you think that, that we can use this practically? Like at, it, it effectively means that the same process by which your aura gets big, mm -hmm. and the process by which you learn how to lucid dream, when you train that and become skilled at it, it's called time travel. Right. It, it basically means that subcomponent harmonics of your own aura or plasma propagate by golden mean ratio times the speed of light phase velocities, which is called time travel. And there's some very specific limiting conditions there. For example, uh, you can do it in environments which are phase conjugate, you know, like a sacred stone circle, better. But if you try it in a metal building in an ugly city, expect to become toast.
No, or or non-happening results, right?